Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough on how to use NiceHash to mine Bitcoin. And I say mine Bitcoin because in today's day, and it's been this way for quite some time due to ASIC miners, it's completely impractical to mine Bitcoin directly with consumer grade hardware. Uh, however, ASIC miners are kind of single function devices. And if you are wanting to kind of mine Bitcoin, purchasing or using an already existing GPU kind of makes more sense to me because those do have alternative uh, use cases uh, such as of course gaming but also kind of machine learning so there are you know alternative uses you can put your GPU power for that ASIC miners aren't really going to be useful for uh, you know down the road so with nice hash what you do is essentially sell your hashing power to mine alternative cryptocurrencies uh, and there are numerous ones out there and they have a uh, numerous algorithms in the association with those different cryptocurrencies so if someone wants to you know mine a cryptocurrency rather than directly uh, purchasing that cryptocurrency nice hash kind of allows you, them to buy kind of a pool of hashing power and in, a in turn you get paid in bitcoin so if you're into go uh, of mining the one of the alternative cryptocurrencies is just to sell that and transfer that to bitcoin nice hash might be a great way to directly kind of get paid in bitcoin for your hashing power now whether it's you know worth it or not is something you probably have to uh, you know do a little bit of testing and kind of get a good feedback i have been using it for a little bit of time i haven't reached a payout of course uh, which is roughly 0 0.01 bitcoin uh for your payout limit which is at this point in time i think is around 25 26 dollars but bitcoin is so volatile uh, that that you know number will change but what they do is they have a great calculator that will kind of tell you your daily payout and weekly payout uh, and as difficulties change and stuff that is subject to change of course and as bitcoin prices price does fluctuate that is subject to change but you can kind of get that a gauge to see if it's worth your power cost to you know put your computer use on nice hash but it is a very cool concept so that's kind of why i'm making this video i will definitely be doing a follow-up video down the road on whether this is actually a good viable option uh and that will something might also be something based on kind of the cost of the power where you live but i definitely do I definitely am interested in this concept so let's go ahead and jump to the computer and start this kind of walkthrough All right, so to get started, head over to nicehash.com and you'll see a green button that says sell hashing power. Go ahead and click on that and then you'll be brought to the screen uh, with a bunch of information. But what the main thing you're going to want to do is click on this blue button that says nice, nice hash miner. Um, and then you'll be brought to once again to a green button. So just follow the buttons uh, that I'm clicking and uh, download the uh miner after that has finished downloading you'll be able to right click and show that in your folder and you'll be brought to your downloads folder go ahead and right click on the folder in there uh for that says that is the current version of the nice hash miner and go ahead and click extract all uh, so their miner has a built-in uh is has a whole bunch of algorithms built in for mining and also has benchmarks for those algorithms so you can get a rough idea on what your return will be on a kind of hourly uh, and daily basis. So once you have extracted those files in your downloads folder, you'll see uh, a application file here called NiceHash Miner. Go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna minimize everything else just to get a nice clean work area for you guys. All right, you'll be brought to the EULA Go ahead and to read through all that information. And after you've done, click accept. And then you'll be brought to a, a, the actual mining screen. Uh, this is just a, a bit of information about the fact that they do use third party software such as Claymore. Uh, and then your application will run through. Uh, it'll try to do a couple of different things. What the computer I'm actually using right now doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So I can't really showcase the GPU side but I will be able to showcase the CPU side and it'll be quite uh, uh, similar of an experience for those two. So what I'm gonna do is uh, change uh, the service location to my local service location after this has finished setting up the miners. And then you'll see your Bitcoin uh, address right here. What you do is paste your Bitcoin address there. And then you can give this computer a worker name. 
Uh, you don't have to do that, but if you're going to have multiple computer, multiple computers mining, you can give each of them a unique name so you can kind of see gauge uh, which workers are doing what, and you might be able to tell if one's offline or online for that matter. Um, so it's kind of gone through the process of setting everything up, uh, and I'm going to click on the the benchmark screen real quick. Normally you would have a option here for every single device that you have. So you'd have a CPU, you'd have a GPU, uh, maybe two GPUs. So you'd have GPU number one, GPU number two. Uh, just check the devices uh, that you want to use in your mining. So maybe you want to mine with the GPUs, but you do not want to mine with the CPU. Uh, you can uncheck your CPU and then check your GPU. And then underneath that, once you have clicked on that device, you'll see a list of algorithms. You can turn each algorithm on or off. Uh, once again, the CPU only has a single al algorithm, so I can't really showcase that fully. But uh, you can see here that the the GPU uh, or the CPU has one. You can kind of get the rough idea of you can turn individual algorithms on or off. And then at th that point in time, what you want to do is start the benchmark. So I'm just going to let this run real quick. Uh, and then I'll jump to it when it's done. It will take a little while to benchmark, especially if you have uh, a CPU and GPU to run through all those different benchmarks, or if you have multiple GPUs, because it'll do the benchmarks on each GPU. So it will take a little bit of time, so go ahead and run that, and then come, come back you know, 15, 30 minutes later, and it should be done. All right, so after a little bit of time, it'll finish all benchmarks, and you'll get a little pop-up that says all benchmarks have uh, been successful and go ahead and click on that and then you'll be able to get a nice little uh, BTC a day estimate so you can see that the, if I was going to mine on this CPU 24 7 I'd roughly get uh, 0 0.0001 Bitcoin a day um, so you can kind of gauge whether that's going to be worth it or not uh, and then at this point in time you can now close and now I'm going to go ahead and paste my Bitcoin address here that'll be your re receiving address of course I'm going to go ahead and change to the Europe. I don't know why it has me as Amsterdam. And I'm just going to name this uh, test, test, test 1 or test 2. And then at that point in time, you have everything set up. So you have your location. Uh, just choose the closest server that is uh, closest to your physical location. Uh, so for me, it's the only USA server. Uh, there's one in Europe, one in China, one in Japan, one in India, and one in Brazil. Uh, make sure you paste your Bitcoin address. Uh, make sure you get the whole address in there and get it correct and then you can optionally give it a worker name as i've kind of already mentioned so after that point in time after you've benchmarked you will now start it'll automatically load the uh, command prompt uh, for the chosen algorithm that needs to be mined and go ahead and start mining i've let the miner run for a little bit to somewhat stabilize uh, it, this is something that's always going to be in flux but this bold data here that's your hashing speed uh, this is always going to be in flux. I've never had a computer that this hasn't fluctuated on, but after you let it run for a while, it should somewhat stabilize and you can get a good ideal of your hashing speed over a period of time. Um, you can see that this is fluctuating uh, and it's you know pretty much constantly updated. I don't know what the like the polling rate is, like how many sec per, you know times per second that that actually is uh, updated, but it is updated pretty regularly. Uh, and beyond your hashing speed and the algorithm data, you have some write data. So you have two pieces of write data uh, here. The very first is MBTC a day, and then you also have US dollars per day. Uh, MBTC is a thousandth of a Bitcoin. So if you move this decimal place right here over three to the left, you'll get essentially what your Bitcoin uh, per day would be. So this is lined up pretty good to what the benchmark was saying at 0.0001 Bitcoin per day. Uh, so I would essentially get point, uh, I would essentially get one MBTC per day, uh, roughly um, every nine days or so, roughly. Uh, so that'd be 0 0.001, uh, roughly every nine days. So uh, decent, but definitely not uh, worth it at 27 cents a day. Uh, now you could, if all you had was like a lower end machine with a CPU, a decent CPU, but not a great a GPU you could mine, you might get 50 cents a day and just kind of hope that the value of Bitcoin rises enough to make that a valid uh, investment or, you know, expenditure of in increasing your power cost uh, from your rig to kind of mine all day long uh, while you're not using it for gaming or other purposes. But ideally what you'd be doing is having some decent GPUs, you know, RX 480s, 
uh, 490s uh, or you know 580s or you know similar NVIDIA GPUs, and you'll be able to really crank out um, your really increase your hashing rate. Uh, and um, generate a lot more Bitcoin on a daily basis to help kind of offset the cost. Uh, I will be doing a follow-up video. Maybe I've been doing this for about a week now, and you can see that so far I've gotten 2.7 uh, MBTC per day, or 0 0.0027 uh, Bitcoin, which right now at this point in time translates to 6.82 or 6.86 uh, US dollars. Um, I'll be doing a kind of a follow-up video down the road. Uh, maybe in another two or three weeks after after this video uh, was recorded and kind of see whether this is actually worth it if if mining on nice hash is worth it uh, at the current USD uh, exchange rate or if you, you might be better off actually mining directly that alternative coin and then selling that on the exchange for Bitcoin this does make it super easy because the miner for one is super easy to, to download and get going uh, and that's and the second point you also get straight um, Bitcoin translation so if you mine a certain alternative coin for a month and then it sharply goes downhill uh, you might have lost all that kind of mining or your hashing power that you put into that alternative coin might end up going to waste because that might not be worth much in, in ratio to Bitcoin or if for some reason it, the ratio exchange rate between that cryptocurrency and Bitcoin uh, starts the gap kind of starts widening there uh, you might end up you know losing out on your hash power for that regard so if your end goal is to give Bitcoin this might be a uh, pretty good method to mine Bitcoin on consumer hardware uh, I will do that follow-up video I'm talking about later on to kind of gauge you know give a little more insight into whether this is something that's viable but uh, I figured I'd make this video to kind of get started and then you can kind of use that information that you're getting down here uh, to gauge whether it's gonna be worth it in the, you know the short term and then you can kind of look at it down the road longer term whether it'll be continuing to be something that's worth it for you all right, so that's pretty much a wrap for today's video, guys. I hope you found it informative as well as helpful. And if you did, give the video a big like. I greatly appreciate that. And also, if you uh, are not an existing subscriber, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Also, check out the links in the description below. And also, they kind of uh, rotate. A lot of them rotate on uh, banners throughout the video. Uh, consider going to those different ways to chat and support uh, me uh, and Thought Provoking Tech as a whole. Uh, once again, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, Zach out.